<laughs> House Speaker Mike Johnson was not exactly welcomed to Columbia University's New York City campus. Uh, when he showed up on Wednesday, he was immediately greeted with booze, which was funny, which is the appropriate response, by the way, for someone like Johnson who only went there to attack students for not wanting to be involved in an ethnic cleansing campaign. I mean, I don't really blame them. According to the Daily Beast, the crowd had loudly heckled and booed Johnson as he approached the podium and launched into a speech, which he railed against so-called anti-Semites who gnash their teeth and demand to wipe the state of Israel off the map and attack our innocent Jewish students. Well, no, hold on here. Uh, first off, okay, there hasn't been violence reported at Columbia against Jewish students. Well, hold on. Johnson and other speakers, which include Republican politicians from New York, as well as people like Virginia Fox, who loves to yell at people, uh, especially students. Uh, they all like to yell at young people, yell at students. They kept talking about uh, violence against Jewish students and all this anti-Semitism. Where is it? Where was it? Where's the reports? Now, the violence here against Jewish students is actually when police had <laughs> came in and arrested them for, again, Jewish students that were part of these protests they put these students in jail for eight hours, even though police had admitted that these students weren't violent, they weren't doing anything wrong. Not only that, but Johnson had threatened to unleash the National Guard, saying that if this is not contained quickly, and if these threats and intimidation are not stopped, there is an appropriate time for the National Guard. We have to bring order to these campuses. He even said that he was going to talk to Biden about it, and uh, now, so far, the White House has said, no, we're not going to call the National Guard, right? Um, now, before I get into more of this, I want to show you more of his speech. As Colombia has allowed these lawless agitators and radicals to take over, the virus of anti-Semitism is spread across other campuses. By some counts, as many as 200 universities have a similar form of protest right now. At Yale, a Jewish student was stabbed in the eye with a Palestinian flag, and 45 students were arrested. At NYU, pro-Hamas protesters were shouting from the river to the sea. Anti-Israel encampments are popping up at universities all across this country. The madness has to stop. The madness has to stop. We, we just left a meeting with students, Jewish students, who told us of the heinous acts of bigotry that they have experienced simply because of their faith. Their bravery is inspiring, much more inspiring than some of the activities we're seeing here. And they should never have to confront such hate on an American college campus. It's such a, such a, a revered institution. Anti-Semitism has been growing in America, and it's clear why. Powerful people have refused to condemn it, and some have even peddled it themselves. From university professors to public officials, people in positions of authority have denied the horrific facts of September 11, 2001, the attacks on the United States that happened right here in New York City, and they've attempted to excuse or to ignore the barbaric attack of Hamas in Israel on October 7, 2023. Pretty much all of that is complete and utter crap. Total crap. All right. This guy is going out there and just flat out lying and smearing these students. I mean, that's it. Oh, complaining about anti-Semitism. Really? You're, you're right-wingers, Republicans are going to go out there and complain about anti-Semitism? When you have on your side... Jewish space lasers. I mean, that... The, I know, I know. They're fighting now. Uh, but <laughs> come on. Anti-Semitic, ah, it's the left, it's anti-Semitic. Really? You guys support Donald Trump, <laughs> okay? And, and there are more examples, but anyway, here's the thing, all right? So he said, we cannot allow this to happen across the country. Well, it's already happening. In Texas, for example, 50 students were arrested. 
The students had called on UT, University of Texas, to divest from arms manufacturers and U.S. and Israeli companies that are profiting off of the war in Gaza. The university endowment has an estimated $52.5 million invested with arms manufacturers. Yeah, no wonder. No wonder they want to call in the guard. <laughs> okay, no wonder they want to crush it. This is not about protecting Jewish students. It's about protecting their endowments from the military industrial complex. And, I, and I'm going to get to that uh, Jewish student stabbed in the eye with a flagpole. First of all, we don't know if it's an accident or not. Secondly, according to the own, that, that student, she had a headache and felt some pressure. And that was it. She's nonetheless okay. She went to the hospital, uh, the emergency room, and said, oh boy, yeah, I'm kind of uncomfortable. That hurt, obviously. Yes, it's going to hurt, right? Um, there was also reference to a chemical attack. It wasn't in the video. Uh, that uh, so-called chemical attack, that was fart spray. Yes, fart spray called liquid ass. Oh, my God. Chemical attack. No, they smell like farts. And yes, it's gross and, and all that stuff. But seriously, you, people like, uh, jo maybe not Johnson himself, but I'm sure Republicans have done worse pranks to each other than uh, what the, you know, the, uh, the, the things that they're decrying right now that the protesters have done is ridiculous. Okay. But that said, anything that threatens their defense contractor friends who are getting rich off of supplying weapons to the right wing Israeli government, they have to stop it. They've got to crush it. And, and, and by the way, that's what Abbott did in Texas. He called in the state troopers, even though the protesters did, not, did nothing wrong. Jeremy Surrey, a Jewish UT Austin history professor, told the Texas Tribune, quote, they're not shouting anything anti-Semitic. They're not harassing anyone. They're standing on the green lawn expressing themselves. But of course, can't let that happen. No, no, no. But again, the irony here of right-wingers who have huddled up with white nationalists and neo-Nazis, the fact that they're calling anyone else anti-Semitic is patently absurd. Getting to Texas, right? Texas, in 2022, led the country in white supremacist propaganda. Yeah, which is, again, anti-Semitic. The Texas-based extreme group Patriot Front was responsible for roughly 80% of all propaganda incidents nationally that year, according to a report from the Anti-Defamation League. Two other groups, the Goyim Defense League and White Lives Matter, accounted for the bulk of the remaining propaganda incidents and were also active in Texas. That's who's doing the anti-Semitism. It ain't the students. They call the protests against the slaughter of Palestinians anti-Semitic. It's absolutely ridiculous. Look, here's the thing. That's their go-to, all right? That's the Israeli, the right-wing Israeli government's go-to if you criticize what they're doing in Gaza right now. The massive bombings, the, the, the mass graves that were found over the weekend, the people found in the mass graves, which are elderly people, mostly women and children, okay? Some of them with their hands bound. They're being called by Israeli officials terrorists, Hamas terrorists. The ones that are dead, they can't defend themselves, found in the mass graves. Those are Hamas. Why are they bound? Who bound them? Who killed them? There's a lot of questions here, right? Look, that said, getting back to Johnson, okay? Most of the students did not give a damn what Johnson had to say. Only about 60 students and journalists showed up. In fact, one undergrad who spoke to the Daily Beast said that, uh, you know what, uh, Johnson doesn't matter because we're focused on the bigger issues at hand. You know, trying to demonstrate and have this uh, school divest from sending the Israeli government weapons, arms. Another was uh, uh, was like, hey, why, why is uh, why is Mike Johnson, Speaker Mike Johnson showing up? That's weird. That's random. One 19-year-old student did say, hey, look, I, I just want to hear what he has to say, okay? Boldy came here. Is it, though? Is it really bold of him to show up? I mean, it's not 
I don't think it's bold to sit there and come and yell at peaceful students. All right. Oh, we get a badass over there. Mike Johnson. No, Mike Johnson, he's a clown. He deserves to be booed. This is the guy who wants police to come and crack students' heads for doing peaceful protests against ethnic cleansing and war crimes. Come on, get out of here. Now, funny enough, some of them joked about which chance may have gotten under Johnson's skin the most, and I think that's fun. Uh, one said, I bet the one about being ugly wasn't fun. Ah, oh, true. Uh, another said that uh, Johnson's rant was simply embarrassing. But you know what's really hypocritical about the response here? How the so-called same people that cried so hard about, ah, free speech warrior, we're free speech warriors, right? And we care so much about campus free speech. How dare, how dare you violate the campus free speech of people who are white nationalists even, or who have white nationalist views coming to speak at campuses? Oh, you're stopping those. The, the snowflake, purple-haired college kids. I hate free speech. You can't handle the speech. And yet, the people who are criticizing, you know, and, and claiming to stand up for free speech are the ones that are wanting to sit cops in the National Guard on students doing peaceful demonstrations. Give me a break. The hypocrisy. Back in 2019, by the way, Governor Greg Abbott of Texas promoted free expression in universities. Here's what he said. Some colleges are banning free speech on college campuses. Well, no more. Because I'm about to sign a law that protests free speech or protects free speech on college campuses in Texas. Now he's like, "Ah, oh, you students, how dare you do your free speech? Now I'm going to have to go change that law and pretend I'm against anti-Semitism." So now, what happened? Free speech on campus? <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> no, because I don't like the content of your message. Because you're calling for peace. No, I can't have that. As long as you're threatening my friends in the arms industry who get rich off us giving weapons to the Israeli government, you have no rights. We will crush you. We will crush you. That's what the reality is. Look, the right-wing government of Israel wants to stay in power and wants the United States to keep giving them money and weapons. It's not, a, it's not shocking. It's not surprising. Every government that we give money and weapons to wants to keep getting money and weapons. Of course. Of course. Now, the thing is, is that Netanyahu and his government has been, you know, caught encouraging terror groups, supporting Hamas. Yes, supporting Hamas. And preventing a peaceful solution that would actually enact, uh, that, that, that would actually protect Israeli citizens and Palestinians. They're actively against a two-state solution which is really the only thing that's going to guarantee a lasting peace. Look, this is an example. What's going on here is an example of what the right wing does everywhere. They create fear and violence. And then they use that to keep themselves in power. It's not a conspiracy. The right wing here and the right wing in Israel do not care about the Jewish people, about Jewish lives about themselves. They don't care about anti-Semitism. And here, Mike Johnson, the Republicans, they don't care about freedom of speech. No, they only care about what benefits them politically and what gets them the most money.